Hello. Hear me. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to bring this on live into Facebook. I haven't connected that part of it yet. Okay. But um, yeah, I'll go through a short intro, a um, uh, couple of sentences just to introduce you. Okay. Now, I, we have some VIP members also, but I don't see them on yet. Today will be joining us, hopefully on Zoom. Okay. And then the others are in the Facebook group. Got it. So, hi, lovely. Oh, here's one of them. We have Laura. connecting. Here. I'll have to send a quick email just to someone who is waiting to hear what's happening. Let me just go live on Facebook and then we'll open the show. Well, hello, Patricia, and thank you for having me. Um, this is amazing, especially to start off my year when I've declared some things over my life. Um, I am Dorlita Blakely, as she said. Um, I love what I do. Um, my passion was for technology, for computers. And so that's really how I got started um, and ended up where I am today. Um, I'm excited about the changes that have taken place in my life, um, having this dream of being um, this person that was in web, that designed websites and made them beautiful beautiful for other people. Um, at one point in my life, I did not think that this was ever possible for me. Um, I came from a small family in Gary, Indiana, um, and I'm sure many people have heard about Gary, Indiana. Not all all good news, but there are very good people that come from Gary, Indiana. And I'm just thankful that I am one of those people who were able to step outside of the box and change my life. And so um, when I said talk about changing my life, I have to talk about changing my mindset. And so the mindset, the mind is, is like first priority. If you want to have a different life, if you want to see yourself anywhere different, different. It starts with your thoughts, what you think about yourself, what your perspective on life is, um, and just having, being in a place of gratitude and hope. And so I have to tell just a bit of my story. This would never be long enough for me to tell it all, but I do want people to know that um, I've not always been this happy, this <laughs> um, this joyous, or have have such a positive mindset. I used to be extremely negative. Everything was always negative. I I was told, you know, being in the place, well, not just told, but I, what I saw growing up was that um, there wasn't much that was out there for me. Um, my father was a, a mechanic. He worked for the police. Do, I mean, there were, were some good things, but not to the to the height that I seen that I can go. There is no limit to how far you can go when you set your mind that this is what you desire, this is what you want to have, and this is how you want to see your life. So all I saw for myself was that I would I could have a job. I had my first child at an early age. Um, I did not go to college like I thought that I would. 
I ended up at 19 years old with my first child and then ended up married at 21 and so or 22 actually and so I thought that all there was to life for me was my children my marriage and just a job something to be able to make money to pay bills and live this life I didn't realize then that there that I could have so much more changing my mindset and so during this time that I was going through just this marriage, I started to go through um, some changes in my health. Things took a, a really bad turn for me. And so for 10 years, I went through a, a span of an illness. I went through a bad marriage. And um, as far as working and being able to do things, it didn't look so good for me at that time. And so I just, one day I just decided that there had to be something more. There had to be something different. I, My question for life was, what was I created for? What is my purpose here in life? And it's, it's not an overnight where I was waiting for the light bulb to just, you know, click and, and flip and everything flip. But it doesn't happen like that. To change your mindset, to change your life, it starts with discipline. You have to have some discipline. You have to be disciplined in when those negative thoughts come to you, that you flip that and you don't allow those negative thoughts to sit with you and fester and turn into your life, turn into what you see from those thoughts, what those negative things that you think become your life. And so it took me some time and I started to read um, several books. And this is really like, even though I had, change happened in my life and some good things had started to happen. No. I got kicked off of Zoom. But really, the late class is talking about our mindset. Mm -hmm. And you change your mind, you change your life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. <laughs> sir. Dominic, so there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the weather is starting to get bad here, and we're supposed to be getting some rain in probably less than an hour, so <laughs> uh, I'm like, why today of all days? But it's okay, because I'm still here, and I'm still getting through it, so no weather can stop us, <laughs> which which actually speaks to um, just what I'm talking about with changing our mindsets. We go through some things in life. We have our trials, our tribulations. We have storms in our life. And if we get stuck in the place where we think that the storm is bigger than who God is, then that's just where we'll be. We'll stay in that place of the storm um, with those thoughts that we think towards ourselves. And so I started to read more and do things to grow myself, grow my mindset, grow my life. And I just want to mention a, a few books that helped me along the way to, to, even though I knew I wanted to change, there's still things that we need to do. There's, um, there's still books we need, we need to grow and mature in life. And so I started reading books like Think and Grow Rich, <laughs> which is so profound. It's such a, a big and popular book, but once you read it, then you can see why. Um, I read The Alchemist, um, I read um, The Richest Man in Babylon, and different um, just self-help books to, to teach me how to change my mindset and what it means to change your mindset. And so I started to think positive. I started to um, affirm myself by writing my affirmations. And so I started doing these affirmations, and I'm, I, I just life completely changed. And that's in the last year or two, life started to change. I started doing these affirmations and affirming myself and believing. It takes a minute before you start to believe what you speak. But the Bible says that what we speak, the, the power of life and death is in our tongues. And so what we speak is what we tend to see in our lives. I actually was so bad in my negative thinking years ago that I would think if I thought the positive thing, the opposite, the negative was going to happen in my life. And guess what? That's exactly what happened in my life because my thought was if I think positive, if I think I'm going to get something good, I'm actually going to get something bad. 
And it takes years to, to overcome those bad habits and those bad thoughts. And so I do want people to know that if you shift your mindset, don't think that you won't still have those, those negative thoughts battling against you. But it takes discipline, discipline to know that even though those, those um, thoughts come, you don't have to entertain them. You don't have to entertain them. I immediately switch that and I start to affirm myself. I am worthy. I know that I'm worthy. I'm gifted. I'm capable. I'm able to do the things that I want to do. I can have whatever it is that I desire. And I know that because I've already seen it happen in my life. We tend to forget the things that do come as soon as we hit a situation that is um, is challenging or we enter a place of where we're surrounded by chaos, we immediately, our, our innate um, humanity immediately will go into the negative. But we have to train and condition our minds to go into the positive place, to speak over those things. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. And we have to keep repeating those things until our, to ourselves until it's not only in our hearts but our, or our minds, but it's also in our hearts. And those two work together to overcome those, those negative thoughts, that negative mindset. And so I started doing that and I figured if I could do the affirmations and see my life start to change, I want to see that for everyone else that's connected to me, right? So every person I come in contact with, I want them to know that you, you, if, if you're in a hopeless state, guess what? You can have hope because you don't have to stay where you are. We have power. We have power down on the inside of us that will cause us to change our lives. But we have to recognize the power first. We have to recognize that we have this power down on the inside of us and then start to operate in that power. And I have people who um, will message me all the time now asking me, how do you, how do you have such a, a positive mindset? How can I have that mindset? Well, first, you have to recognize that you have this on the inside of you. You have to recognize that you have been lied to pretty much all of our lives from birth by an enemy who does not want to see us succeed. And we have entertained the thoughts that he has brought to our minds rather than what we should know or what the Bible says, if you ask me. As a minister, that is my first, my first source. So I go to the word to find out who I am. So we have to discover who we are and what power lies on the inside of us and then start to operate from there. I don't care what step. You have to take the first step to get over. I, I love the, the point that you make about the affirmations. It's no good just affirming those affirmations and uh, believe it all, having the belief that goes against mm -hmm. what you just the affirmations just saying, you know, I come across many musicians, artists, public speakers, creatives, you know, I see them really in that realm. I come across many of them that struggle with the self-doubt issue, this thing of not believing in themselves. And then that leads to the fear of putting themselves out there in front of people, in front of audiences, and just put themselves out there. Like, why... Well, we're afraid of what we don't know. Um, and to be honest, we're afraid of, I think the biggest part is that we're afraid of what others are going to think about us, what they're going to say about us. And so I have this saying, step over fear. Step over fear because on the other side of fear is something amazing and you will never reach that amazing thing unless you step over the fear. You have... You have to move with the fear. Even though you have it, go forward because you'll never know and you don't want to regret not even trying. So my favorite quote is by Mark Twain, which says, 20 years from now, 
You'll, you don't want to regret what you did not do over what you did do. So he says, step over the, step over, um, well, it's my saying, step over the fear. He says, throw off the bowline, sail away from the safe harbor. Find out what's on the other side of the fear. The, the fear only exists because it knows that you have something great on the other side. And so I've, have to, I've had to step over my fears. I had a fear of being online. I had a fear of putting myself out there. But once I did it, what we don't understand is that it's only the enemy in our mind telling us that we're not, we would not be able to help somebody. Before I started doing um, the morning shows that I that that I did live every morning, I battled with the enemy telling me, "Well, they're gonna laugh at you. They're gonna think you stupid. Who do you think you are?" Um, uh, that people were gonna say, "Who do you think you are? Why do you think that you have that type of knowledge? You're not that smart." But guess what? I had to come to a point and say, I want to be obedient because apparently if God is calling me to this, that means he has something in this for me. And I was so glad that I stepped over it. I didn't know what lied on the other side until I got there. And it was amazing. So what if people laugh? There are other people who are in need of what you have. And so I always say that you have something on the inside of you that somebody else is in need of. And the only way that they can get what it, what it is that you have is if you get up and you give it. All you have to do is give it. You are the messenger. You're delivering the message just like the mailman delivers the mail. No one wants to get bills in the mail. <laughs> We want checks. We don't want bills. But the mailman has to deliver the mail. He has to deliver the bills. He's just doing his job. He's not the bill collector. So I take it. God is my source. He sends me with the message. If someone rejects that message, they are not rejecting me personally. We take rejection personally. Like they've rejected us. They're not rejecting me. They're rejecting the one who sent me. So all, my job is to deliver the mail, <laughs> deliver the message. We, we are sensitive beings, really, mm -hmm. in, in, in this world. Like there are, some of us are more resilient to that than others. But basically, one of the things that I love most with putting yourself out there is overcoming that resilience. Mm -hmm. And building the confidence and basically the resilience and the confidence and also the fear that you speak about the fear mm -hmm. and the excitement is kind of the two sides to the one coin so can you elaborate a little bit on confidence and building the confidence and overcoming that resilience absolutely so for me that's where the affirmations come in it's true you stand in front of a mirror and you affirm yourself. And then you start to see yourself as what you speak. And then you take that. When, when I say you're the messenger, there is confidence in that. There's confidence in, in being just the messenger and realizing that it's not about me. It's not, it's not about me. It's about a need that someone has. So let me... Let me say that if he chose me to be the messenger, <laughs> that's an honor. It's an honor to go and deliver that message to wh whomever it, it needs it. And then as you continue to do that, your confidence builds. It builds because you're going to realize that every person that receives that message is not negative. They're not negative. And once you find that out, that you, you get like this boost of confidence. I was able to do this this time. I can do it the next time. And I believe in the 80-20 rule. If you, if you can just stick to the 80-20 rule, know that 80% will receive what you have for them. Whatever it is you're delivering, 20% will not. And be okay with the 80%. No one is perfect. We are not perfect. We may not deliver perfectly. But at least you did what you were supposed to do. And now that's done. 
So when I get to something, and I, I, I will tell you, every morning before I, I went live, I would be nervous. I would be a wreck. <laughs> and no one could see that but my husband, which who was behind the camera controlling, you know, the show. And so the moment the live, and there's no place else for you to go, the moment he says, we're live, it's like something different comes over me because you can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back. At that point, you have to keep moving forward. And so you move forward and then you get to the end of that thing. And, and it's like, I was able to do that. And if I could do it once, I can do it again. And then I can do it again. And so the more you start to do that, the more you build your confidence because you realize that people are, they, there are people that who are accepting the message that you're delivering. They're receiving the hope they're receiving the joy and, and you start to get a response from people because they will respond and tell you what your message has done for them. If that doesn't build confidence, I don't know what else will. <laughs> It does. Drive, uh, it takes a calling. It absolutely How does. does. That they are tapping into that calling. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't if you don't tap into it, you don't know what you're missing. There's so much in it. Not only are people being blessed, but I'm blessed by being a blessing to someone else. It brings me so much joy and so much excitement. I'm encouraging someone else. The encourager is not always encouraged. <laughs> Sometimes we need encouragement. And so I can take my mind off of whatever it is I'm facing by encouraging someone else and seeing them, their, their, whether it's their eyes sparkle or it's a message or you can tell that they're, they're, the, the wheels are turning on whatever it is that you've told them, that right there alone, I don't care if I don't get anything else, anything, I'm not even looking for anything else, but to see someone else receive the joy, the excitement, the hope that I can bring from whatever it is that I do for them, whether it's speaking, whether it's being live, whether it's the art that I create as a graphic artist, whether it's the web designs for their business or even personal use hobbies, whatever the case is, if I can bring that to someone else, it makes me want to do that even more. Just like a mother or a father wants to do for their children. when And, and children become excited. When you encourage them, and I, I always use the, the, the potty training example. When you're potty training your children, they, they don't want to go to the potty. They've been doing this thing the way they've been doing it since they've been here. But here comes the potty training. We want them to start to grow. And so we're potty training them. And it starts off rough. It starts off rough, but you keep sending them and then you start to encourage them. When when, I, when my children were little, I would encourage them. I had a song I would sing when they would use the potty. And so once I started singing that song and it encouraged them, then um, they wanted to go on their own. And once they go on their own, they come back excited. Mommy, I did it. I did it. Can we sing the song? Mm -hmm. And I think we even as adults, young adults, uh, middle age, older, we're still that way. When someone encourages us in our walk in this journey called life. You know, we get excited. There's a reward for it, whatever it is, whether it's physical, where it, whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, we receive something from being encouraged and excited. And I just, I really appreciate that. I, I just want to introduce our VIP uh, members here. We have David and we have Paul who's on by pronouncing that right. Now, um, welcome to you, David and Helen. If you want to uh, 
ask a question, feel free to do so. Um, just unmute yourself and ask um, just ask away. And in the meantime, I'm just continue talking and we'll have a conversation here. And anyone in the Facebook group, I'm trying to keep an eye on things here. If there's any questions, um, just pop them in the comments and I'll see if I can get them before they before the, the, the chat disappears with us. So, um, yeah, I know you uh, are all about confidence and mindset now. What do you say about performance anxiety? Performance anxiety can eat away at our, at our, our soul, really, mm -hmm. whenever we get out there. That performance anxiety triggers us up in one sense that we cannot communicate and put ourselves out there that we can land with someone. So what tips can you give us for people with big performance anxiety? I have it. It's something I have. And I've always had it and I still have it. <laughs> Um, I think we all in some way still have it, no matter how many times we've performed, no matter how many times we've been up before people. We still have this um, th this performance anxiety. And even before I get up, um, if I have to preach, most of the time I'm like, don't call my name, don't call my name, don't call my name. <laughs> um, but it, when it's my turn, it's my turn. And so we have to push through. Um, I would say start small, start, start with a small audience, one-on-one. -on -one. I love the one-on-one -on -one more than I love the one-to-many ratio. And so start small, do what you, remember that we all make mistakes. There are times we all mess up. Even in preaching the word, there are some times that I may not get it right. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you. It's a learning process. And so um, as, as a business owner, what I've come to realize and, and studying, you know, so many wealthy people who are running major corporations, which is my dream, is to run a, 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 a corporation where I employ many and give many opportunities. And so in order to get there, what I had to learn was that I, start, I started businesses back in 2005. And here I am. I'm not where I want to be in my business, but I've slowly grown. I've given up a little bit and then I've come back to it. What I've learned is that even those that we see in the limelight, they didn't start there. They didn't start there. They failed so many times, but we don't get to see the failure or what's behind the curtain, what's taking place behind the curtain. All we see is when they make it, we see the glitz and the glamour of what they've gone through, but every one of them have failed. When I, I talked about um, the other day, Benjamin Franklin, we have electricity, we have light because he discovered it, but he didn't just discover it just like that. He, he, he did some work, he failed over and over. Thomas Edison with the phone, he didn't just come up with the phone. He had an idea. He didn't just come up with it, but he failed over a hundred times, but he did not give up. And so when that anxiety comes on us again, that's where, if you can remember anything that I've said, step over the fear, do it anyway. Even if you mess it up, don't quit. Don't stop there. Get up and do it again. If you have to start back small with a small audience, then do that until you get to the larger one. But you've got to, if you want it to be successful, if you want, and I define success as not what the world thinks, but what makes me happy, what gives me peace, what brings me joy. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to be a million dollars in the bank. I could be happy with my health just going and knowing that I'm healthy. I have I have a blood pressure issue. Success for me in that is to be able to get off of medication and and control this thing naturally. It's it's hereditary for me. It's down the generations and so I just think you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You have to keep your eyes focused ahead. Only time you should look back is to see how far you've come. Not dwell on what it is you did wrong. Not dwell on I failed at that or I didn't make it or that thing wasn't successful. You keep moving. You have to keep moving. 
And then when you look back to see how far you've come, you will see that you did it so many times. You did it so many times. So this next time is not different. It's not different. It's even greater because you're you're stepping into that thing. And you're keeping you keep going forward. Keep to keep going to fall and get up and keep going is a success within itself. Yeah. And it's funny, Tony, with the fear, not the fear, the failure. We 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 learn from our mistakes. Absolutely. Every time something fails, uh, even with myself, I'm looking back on different projects that maybe weren't as good as what I wanted them to be. But every time I do something and I do the another project similar, I can see the progress from the failure. And I can talk about it because I can see the progress. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing this over maybe the last couple of years. So, like, if I heard that said to me, maybe I wouldn't believe it. But because I lived through it, I'm actually able to say, that, yeah, that's what happens. And we're, we're harder on ourselves than other people are harder on us. So I found out with a lot of, um, in ministry and, and many other places too, we can, we can get up, we can preach a word or even like now me being able to speak and I can, people can love it, but I'm thinking, oh, I missed that. I didn't, I didn't say that. And I should have said that, or maybe I should have said this a different way, or maybe I should have done that a different way. And, and and we're coming down on ourselves because we think we should be perfect and we should do it and de- and the delivery should be just this grand, perfect thing. But no, you did just what you needed to do. And there's others out there. I Man, that word was for me. I, I do it every day with my affirmations. Even the, I, because I post them, I make them every night, post them in drafts so that in the morning I can post them while I'm still doing my affirmations and getting myself ready for work. And I'm I'm thinking, I put something out and I'm like, man, maybe I should have chose a different video background. And here this video hits 51,000 views with all of these comments. And I'm like, oh, well, it was better than I thought it was. (laughs) So, you know, a lot of times it's us in our own minds being heavy on ourselves than people are being on us. We got to relax. I try to do mine throughout the day. I think you should be doing it throughout the day. I start in the morning when I get up. I post them so that people have them. But repeat them throughout your day. At least, uh, I would say like your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Repeat those affirmations as many times as you can think about it. And then keep, it, it needs to, the repetition is what gets it down on the inside. So it's not just saying them once and then moving on. No, repeat them as many times as necessary until you get that down on the inside of you. This is who I am. So, and not only that, you see me, I'm wearing my affirmations. <laughs> I, it, it, it has to be not just a part of me, but who I am to remember who I actually am. So I wear them. I I make them in videos. I have them as screensavers on my, my, my phone screensaver is actually me with this affirmation on. So if I can, it's me wearing the affirmation and I change this just however I feel, but there's an affirmation on my phone. Um, I will say that for me, all of my, um, all of my, um, folders on my phone are actually affirmations. So I make sure like I have, go go ahead. You need to become obsessed with them, really. Kind of, yes. (laughs) Because you you have so many negative thoughts. Yeah, there's so many negative thoughts. You have to surround yourself with what you want in your life. So your circle, you surround yourself with people that are going where you where you, you you desire to go. What's your vision for your life? That's what you surround yourself by. So since I was so crowded with negative thoughts, I put them everywhere so that I remember who I am. 
So I, like my phone, it says, I am rich, I am helpful, I am productive, I am creative. I use my phone every day. And so when I look at my, my phone screen, I'm seeing who I am as well. So I surround myself with my affirmations. Good afternoon. Um, so I do look for inspiration when I make my affirmations. Um, there are affirmations all over. You can Google Pinterest is one of my best friends. <laughs> so I go to Pinterest and I will search. And then I, what I do is I'll take the affirmations that are up on there that resonate with me. And then I will customize them for me. So you said you're a singer. I have the voice of angels. I have the voice of angels. I do them in the present tense, present tense, and I also do them in future tense for things that I want to see coming into my life. So what you do today is shaping what your tomorrow is going to look like or what next something in next week could have something to do with what you're in what you're in today. So I I try to be present in the moment. In the moment and consider what what is it that I do when I get up in the morning first of all I thank God and I ask him what it is that he wants for me to do for the day. Whatever that plan is, whatever that purpose is, let let your will be done. Show me what it is that you want me to say, how you want me to say it, and then um I read the word so I go through the word in the morning. My my first thing is when I get up. So I've already done the affirmation. Today is Friday. No, today is Monday. This evening, I will sit down. I will pray. And then I will draft the affirmations that go up tomorrow morning. So the video is already done. I place it in my drafts. When I get up, then whatever the caption is going to be, whether it's going to be one of the affirmations or something else, I pray and then I do that and I post them. I go through the word. I have devotionals that I read in the morning. And I feel like whatever I'm reading, nothing happens by circ um, happenstance or circumstance. I think it is all divinely done by God. And so whatever it is that whatever devotion and word that comes that morning I believe that's what God wants for me. And so I take that and I try to apply that to my day. I try to apply that word to my day. I post prayers. <laughs> so not, a, not along with the affirmations, I post prayers because I am a Christian. Um, and I know that people use affirmations in many ways, not just as um, a spiritual means, but they use them negatively as well. Um, and so I want people to know that I'm not in the negative aspect of posting affirmations. I'm not into the witchcraft of it. I'm doing this at, with, with the grace of God, the grace and the mercy of God. And so I allow him to direct me in what it is I need to say. And I feel like God has been on point because not only are they working for me, but I have people... It, it, it's an overwhelming and amazing feeling to have people come in and say to you, I needed that today. The exact words that you have written, I need that today. And so that has encouraged me and that has given me even more confidence that even if I post, if I write them and I don't, I'm not quite sure the doubt starts to try to come in, I post it anyway. And that's the thing. I, I might want to change it. I may go back and forth with myself like, ah, maybe I should do it this way. No, 
Just do what God has given you the first time. Don't question. Don't doubt. That's when you start to mess up. Just do it. And every single day, I, I kid you not, every single day, I have more than one say, I needed that exact word today. That's the thing that I've been going through and I needed that today. And so I just appreciate, I appreciate the, the, the habit that I've built. Get up, study, do my affirmations, study the word and prepare for the day. And then when I get to a place like even now for um, this event today, I sat down in front of my computer. After I've done everything, I sat in front of this computer and before I clicked the button to even come on, I said a prayer. Lord, you guide me, you lead me, you give me the words that I should say. Don't let it be my my voice, my words, because <laughs> it's not, no telling where I'll take you. <laughs> Not intentionally, but no telling where I'll take you. Yeah. You guide me. Yeah. You speak through me. And just allow him that space. Yeah. The, the, it's basically what I'm hearing here is the power of affirmations. The, the power of the mindset in the belief mm -hmm. behind that, that affirmation. Mm -hmm. So when we take this a little further, you know, does the affirmations and the life of journaling together they do they do absolutely journal the bible says write the vision and make it plain that they that see it might run with it so when i want something i write it down and it's so funny i did that even when my mind was not all the way there i had written things down that i wanted to happen in my life and i i in 2018, I did something that I thought was impossible for me. I created a mobile app. I created a mobile app in March of 2018. And then one day, I think it was a couple months into it, I went back and I have my, I'm a technology person, so I don't write everything in a notebook. Some things I do and some things I, I do electronically in a notebook that I have. And so I went back one day and I was reading in this notebook something that I had written down. And the thing that I had written down was that I wanted a mobile app because I wanted to see the word. I use my phone all the time. I wanted to, the word to be the first thing that I see on my phone before I start to check emails, bank accounts, all that kind of stuff. And I saw where I had written in 2013 that I wanted a mobile app and I wanted to be able to send scriptures as notifications to people's phones where the word could be the first thing that they see in the morning. Five years later, I had a mobile app where I was sending scriptures and words of encouragement in a mobile app to people's phones starting first thing in the morning. So it may not happen immediately, but when you write it without even knowing it subconsciously, you're running after the thing after the vision that you've written. So I think affirmations and, and journaling absolutely go together. Absolutely. And then you're able to go back and see what it is that you desired and see that it has been completed. So you, Lily, yes. Um, we not hold on to the affirmation or the journaling, whatever the vision. No. So let's say you mm -hmm. want to do a journaling around the vision that you want to call into your life. I suppose the best thing there is to come back there and let go of it. Mm -hmm. And then I wait for it to come. Mm -hmm. And if you're waiting and hanging on to it, that's what's kind of blocking it. It is. So so when you want something, um, but subconsciously what you're doing is when you keep I, this, I want this, I want this, I want this. What you're doing subconsciously is saying what you don't have. And what you don't have is exactly what you're going to receive. So I, I write, write it down, say my affirmations, I let it go. I repeat them so that I know what it is. But when I put it out in the atmosphere, it's out there. And I give, I let God have that work and let his angels do what they need to do in the appointed time, appointed time, 
you will receive what you have already put out into the atmosphere. You will attract what it is that you that you're putting out. And so um, I that was a hard lesson, too, because I started out with my affirmations and I'm like, I keep saying it, but I ain't I haven't gotten it yet. I haven't gotten it yet because what you're really doing is focusing on. I don't have it. So I put it out there. I let it go. I move on to the next thing. Um, and what that has done for me, if I can, um, I know that people have a hard time with the affirmations. So what I've done is written a book. This book is full of affirmations. There's over 500 affirmations in this book that people can use in different areas, whether it's for self-care, um, if it's for success and money, if it's for grat uh, affirmations for gratitude. The number one thing. The number one thing is to be grateful for everything that you already have. Everything that you have already asked for that is already in the works. Be grateful for even the smallest things. Because if we could be faithful over a few, <laughs> we will rule over many. And so I just, I put this together because I know people were asking questions about how to, how to start their affirmations, how to do affirmations. And so like the title of um, this this speaking for me is if you change your mind, you'll change your life. And it starts with you affirming yourself, who you are, and repeatedly saying that is who I am. And then start to operate in that. Whether you have what you want or not, operate in what you affirm for yourself. And believe it. is the free gift or is the, the free gift something else because i have a link to a free gift yeah it, it will be the book account. it will be the book which is yeah yes so this if, if i um after today mm -hmm. after these interviews today i will put in all free gift links that okay you can download and donate us link will be there among among that so um, I know we're coming to the end, to the end of the interview here. So is there anything you want to, oops, the microphone will keep hitting us. <laughs> is there anything you want to leave us with? Any little gem that we can walk away with at the moment? I do, and I, I already said it, but I want to repeat it because I want you to get that down on the inside. You have something in you that somebody else is in need of. Not only does it help you, but you help someone else, but you're helping yourself when you empty yourself of whatever it is that you have that somebody else needs. You are blessed to be a blessing. So bless somebody with you what you have. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive, whether it's your time, whether it's your words, your encouragement, your inspiration, your hope, your music. Somebody needs that. Music moves people. Music is emotional. It's emotional. And so music can change someone's mood. It can change their day. It can change their hour. Music can change someone's life. So don't keep it to yourself. Don't be afraid to share it. Just do it. Step over the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you'll get into that that mood or mode of giving to give. Yes. Whether you touch one or one million, it's all the same in the in the eyes You're of welcome. God. <laughs> You're welcome. Beautiful. So thank you very much, Donita. I find that really interesting about the affirmations and the journaling. Um, I would I've experienced doing affirmations but not believing them. Mm -hmm. It's difficult sometimes to get underneath the fear in the mind that mm -hmm. this isn't going to work. And yeah, just like you're saying, that's what stops it. So yeah, good thing. I love that. The power of affirmations, really. Yes. It's what this interview is really around. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for having me. So, Where can people find you? Uh, what's your website and your Instagram handle? 
Um, it's all my name, <laughs> Dorlita Blakely. So you can go to Dorlita Blakely on Instagram. Um, my website is DorlitaBlakely.com. Um, TikTok, all of YouTube, all of those, it's my name. I made it really simple so you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to try to figure it, figure it all out. Oh, I could put it in the chat if you want. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I'm just checking on you in your Facebook group here. Um, yes. Practice, yes. Don't give up. It's the same the comments here. Study for sure. Um, learn, learn for lessons. You make study for your learning mistakes. For writing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This is great feedback here on, on your interview. Awesome. I'm glad to be here. Those are great books to read, and that's what you are saying. So that's some of the feedback coming back to you um, from the Facebook group. Awesome. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Um, shortly, I think in about another 10 minutes, we're going to have our next guest coming on. And in the meantime, um, I just would like to say again, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to go.